From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 Studios in New Orleans is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. I'm Vasilios. That is Sean Fazan. Remember to like, subscribe, rate, and review. You can find us wherever you find your podcast, listen to, or watch. And if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you hit that little bell notification button. You get notified whenever we upload a new podcast. Sean Fazan, welcome back to the Crescent City. It's great. Great to be back. Great to see you again. Great to be here in person this time. It feels like a year ago since the last time we did a pod when I was on the kind of the the steps of my Airbnb in Newport Beach, California. A lot of things happened between then and now with me sitting here with you today. But like Sil said, be sure to like, share, rate, review, comments below. We love them. Keep them coming. Fox 8 Overtime YouTube channel, all that good stuff, wherever you get your podcast. All right, back to the subject at hand. Let's unwind a wild week on the West Coast. Like I said. Yeah, I mean, between hurricane, between hurricanes, tropical storms, and an earthquake, you, you had a week of biblical proportions out there. I went from legitimately, you all saw it if you were watching Fox 8. If you, you all saw it if you follow me on Instagram and Facebook. I was legitimately bragging about the conditions on live television <laughs> with Lee Zurich and Meg Gatto on live TV. I got in the Pacific Ocean during a live shot. They're taking a video of my feet because I was bare feet in the ocean and on the sand in Newport Beach. It was fantastic. It was picture perfect. I almost felt bad for you guys down here, but almost because I know you guys are dealing with some heat, but it felt tremendous out there but i guess i got a little too happy bragged a little too much because karma came and got me and all of us that were out there because Weather somehow you. somehow after friday's practice which was gorgeous gorgeous somehow between that the ending of that and the game on sunday night hurricane which turned into a tropical storm which Kept us on edge about whether or not the game was actually going to get played. And then, oh, by the way, a half hour before kickoff, because they somehow kept everything on as scheduled, an earthquake hits Southern California. I didn't feel anything. I was on the field. My friends that were up in the press box felt it because that stadium, SoFi Stadium, is built to kind of sway with those things. So be it. I felt more... <laughs> I felt more of a shake at the Garth Brooks concert in Baton Rouge uh, last year at Tiger Stadium when it registered in the teams or in the school's geology department, the the Garth Quake, wherever it was. So um, it's funny because, you know, we're so used to hurricanes here. When we hear hurricane, we go into hurricane mode and, you know, news director, GM, I mean, they're calling me. They're saying what's going on, what's happening. And it really just kind of creates this – one of the hardest things about hurricanes or any natural disaster in general is just kind of the wait and see what's going to happen because you just kind of feel like you're on standby. You're on edge. And throughout the entire process, I kept checking and checking, checking. Nope. Game's still on. Game's still on the schedule. Game, we kept waiting for the cancellation despite the negative PR. Negative F. I mean, a few of us said, well, we can't believe this is happening. Sure. The game went on, and when the game went on, look, we did a good job of kind of keeping the, the weather as part of the story leading up to the game, but once the game started, all y'all cared about, and rightfully so, was the game at hand, and it was a good game, and it was a game that we're going to talk a lot about here today. So that West Coast trip was one for the books. I've never covered a tropical storm. I've never been in a tropical storm and an earthquake on the same day. That's the first time for everything, I guess. <laughs> hey, man, there's a first time for everything, and... Uh we got some a lot of first time opportunities for a lot of dudes yeah. on this team. So, for those guys, who stood out most in this game against the LA Chargers? All right, I'm gonna put this in two columns because to me, there's a difference between popping up in the preseason with a few plays and doing something that you can see will translate into the regular season on a regular basis. Both are good, but one is probably a little more sustainable than the other. Not hard to figure out which one I'm talking about. So I'm going to start with the two things that I saw that weren't just good, but I think it's going to translate into the regular season. Not hard to figure out. <laughs> one is Kendra Miller. Probably the most important development, in my opinion, is Kendra Miller. I think he has now successfully crossed the barrier of rookie trying to figure out what this guy can, can't do, 
Can we trust him to, okay, now we can put him on the field. He knows what he's doing. You saw the wheel route catch. It was fantastic. He ran the route. He read the leverage. That's a guy that didn't catch the ball in college. And throughout the practices, they have been throwing him the ball. It's almost like they're going to force him to be a receiver. And he's responded. He talked to me after the game. He said the terminology, he was swimming in it early, but now he's got it. And to be a back in this offense, it's not easy because there's so many things you have to do and so many reads you have to make and so much information you have to comprehend on every play. He makes the catch. Fantastic catch. And he said he kind of lost. You, you worry about the lights because of where it sits. Mm-hmm. All things you don't think about, we just watch the play. But it happens. And if you're not a natural pass catcher, it can be difficult. It can be a little nerve-wracking. But Jameis put it out there. He laid out for it. Made a nice catch. He also ran it in for a touchdown. Made a nice read on the outside zone run. What he's very natural at. He's a very downhill guy. One cut. Nice play. So now he's proven he can run the ball. We knew that. You feel better about him catching the ball. But where he's really grown, because this is not an if. This is you must. You must be able to do this in this offense. All running backs in this offense, you cannot just be a guy that runs out on routes on pass plays. There are times you have to pick up the blitz. He did it in the game a couple times. Did it in practice a couple times. Did it throughout camp a few more times. I believe... Kendra Miller has officially moved from, okay, let's see where we're at with this guy, to we can trust him, let's get him on the field, which is huge because Kamara's going to be out the first three games. You need someone that, that can certainly fill in. He can do that. And I think he's a guy that helped himself a lot and helped his team a lot. We'll see how the numbers shake out because of the Kamara suspension, who ultimately stays there, who they keep. And how they play with the numbers. But I think Miller's going to be a part of the equation. A big part of the equation. The other is Jalen Smith. Speed. Jalen Smith. How fast did he look? Dude, that, that is the thing about him. Heat-seeking it's missile. Athleticism through the roof. He didn't even have to make a play, which he did, to notice him just how fast he is when he gets to the sideline. Yep. Of course, it was going against twos. Who cares? This guy just got here. Yeah, you don't need him to be the anchor of your defense. He just got here, and he's a guy. He still got it. Yeah, he still got it. Let's not forget this guy was a high round draft pick a few years ago and was a very good linebacker. He's been on what three or four teams over the last couple seasons. Something like that. Yeah. He's here now, and I think what he showed all of a sudden just by one player. How does it translate? Well, I'll tell you how. I think he solves the team's third linebacker woes. This team was very susceptible or very vulnerable behind the top two backers. Pete Werner, Demario Davis. Davis has been out. Werner has had an injury history. Caden Ellis stepped in last year, was phenomenal. Can Jalen Smith give you that? Yes. Sideline to sideline. I don't know if he's going to be the blitzer Caden Ellis was. Mm. But they'll figure it out. And now all of a sudden, when I was doing roster projections, I had a hard time before Jalen Smith figuring out who belonged and thinking they're going to have to look elsewhere to now you got this guy, now you might have a tough cut or two, depending on how the numbers, how they shake out the linebacker position. So Jalen Smith, it didn't take long. He's on. He's got to be on this roster. He, he has got to be on this roster. And I think it bolsters one of the, the thinnest groups on defense. It bolsters the group now to which, if you look at the front and the back, you may have something there because this is a guy that can play the run. Uh, we'll see what he does in the passing game. I'll, we'll see if he can blitz. He made that nice play on that out route. But he plays so fast. And for that guy as your top backup or your third backer, he's going to see the field, and he gives this the coaching staff a peace of mind at a very vulnerable spot. So the two things that translate, Kendra Miller and Jalen Smith. So we're talking about two surefire guys that pretty much have locked up a roster spot. Let's talk about some guys that needed a good performance to help their case into making this final 53, man. Who helped themselves the most? Okay, this is this is more the popped up with a few plays in the preseason category. I, I don't know where this, tran- this, this, this... This is an individual player helping themselves to possibly get a roster spot or practice squad spot. Nico Lelos... 
your guy. Mm-hmm. I know you like that name. Greek dude. Sills Greek, in case y'all didn't know. If you, if you couldn't tell. Um, <laughs> look, three sacks, three sacks. I don't care if it's against third team. And he's a guy that sometimes third team reps in training camp, you kind of, eh, you know, you're not quite as focused as you are when you're watching first ones and twos. But credit him. He got an opportunity. He made it work. Don't know if there's a spot for him on the active roster. I do think he helped his practice squad chances. So, Nico Lelos, who knows? Isaac Yadam, another play. He's been pretty consistent all camp. It's That secondary's got some players now. Had the interception. Mm-hmm. Not sure what Easton Stick was looking at. Who cares? Yadam gets off the, the guy he was on, makes the pick. You're focusing on takeaways. These are game-changing plays. So, Yadam, how do you say his name? Is it Yadam, Yadam? I've heard, Number 27. I've heard Yadam. Yadam. He helped himself again. Like It's going to be hard to cut a guy like that. The other guy. Welcome to the party, Shaq Evans. He's huge. Big dude. 6'5"? He is huge. But I've seen 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six receivers come through here that it just it's, it's the eye test and that is it. That ain't... Early in camp, it was kind of like that with Shaq. Now, he's starting to make play after play after play. That catch from Jameis was phenomenal. Starting to make some catches now. Don't know how the numbers are going to shake out at receiver. I don't know if he's quite earned the trust yet to be on the active roster, but I think he helped himself with a practice squad spot today. And look, the other guy, some people may get frustrated at this, and I get it. And I think it it... it his effort kind of demonstrates where he's at. He has grown, but he's not there yet. But I think he can be there very soon. Tight end Lucas Crawl. He made some phenomenal catches, and he had that awful drop in the end zone. I mean, he makes that catch. He puts the exclamation point on his performance, and maybe you're talking about him making the active roster. Still think there's an outside chance he gets in, depending on how the numbers shake out and what happens in that room with certain players. Mm-hmm. We'll get to him later. But I don't think the Saints want to let him leave. I mean, he's the active player, and you can see it. So, while he had the bad drop, I think he, overall, it was a pretty positive performance. But you can just tell there's still a little bit of development to go. I get a little more consistency, consistency to his game. So, Crawl, Lalos, Evans, Yadam. Those right. are the four outside of the two that I already mentioned. All right, so... We're after after a couple of weeks of technical difficulties, we weren't getting as many questions uh, as we thought we were going to. So now we fixed it, and we've gotten a, a bunch over the last few days. And so we got we picked out three to bring on the podcast today. And so you alluded to the tight end room just a few seconds ago. Here, this question comes from Brandon Laplace. Mm-hmm. Will Jimmy Graham make the final fifty-three man roster? Sean Fazan. Oh, the Jimmy Graham situation. A, another layer to the mix of the post Friday feel good. Southern Cal vibes to by the time the game was played added a whole nother feeling to the trip as a whole. It was a very strange set of circumstances. It was a, it was a difficult story to report on because there was reports that, that had come out. There were things that we had confirmed and it, it was one of those where you, we just kind of kept finding more information or tried to find more information, but I only reported what I was able to confirm. And that is you had a medical situation taken into custody, eventually at a local hospital where Saints doctors looked at him and said it was likely seizures. Tough situation. For the question at hand, and we'll see what develops with it, the question at hand, Jimmy Graham is now a medical situation, not just a football situation. That is a very important distinction because... Football-wise, I believe Jimmy Graham has done enough to earn the spot that he would take based off what he has shown throughout camp. I believe he is further along, has more left in the tank than Ben Watson when he returned the second time around. Roman Harper when he returned the second time around. Robert Meacham when he returned the second time around. I believe Jimmy Graham has more left than those guys did the second time around. Thought he had a good practice Thursday. He, you know what he's going to be. He's going to be a guy that runs out routes. He's going to be a guy to run goal line fades. That's what he's going to be. He's fine in that role. The Saints are fine in that role. 
and we talked to him Friday. He was in such a good place. So to have that drastic turn of events was unfortunate, but it's something the Saints have got to monitor. If medically this becomes complicated, then I could see the Saints saying, look, we got some young guys. We have to look elsewhere. We don't know the, the, the you know, the stability of the situation is, is can they can they go with it? But if he's medically cleared, yes, I believe he makes the roster at tight end. All right. So this next question is from the Pacific Northwest, Isaac in Seattle, Washington. Did Jake Hayner play better than Jameis Winston? Well, I answered this question a certain way on the Black and Gold Review with Juan and Deuce. I'm going to expand on it today. Objectively speaking, watch both quarterbacks play. Yes, Jake Hayner going against the threes had a better at better overall game than Jameis Winston going against the twos. I thought Hayner clearly responded from his preseason opener, and I thought Winston wasn't quite as good as his preseason opener. Jake Hayner responded exactly the way you wanted him to respond. I thought he was accurate. I thought he was decisive. I thought... He had the confidence, the body language that you want. So yes, I think that his overall better effort, his effort was overall better than James. I thought James had a typical James game, hot and cold, beautiful throw on the wheel route, beautiful throw to Shaq Evans, which I didn't even know how it got completed. Almost got picked off twice, and through, including throwing in a double coverage in the end zone right before halftime, which could have crushed any chance to get points. So yeah, I I thought that was pretty typical James effort. And I thought Hayner showed some growth because when you're a rookie and your first game doesn't go quite as well, even though it was, you know, he was able to finish it pretty good. The fear is, especially a guy like that, that you want to do so good so badly that you press. It wasn't the case. His very first play was fantastic. The throw to Jontae Kirkland where he had to kind of, I thought he was going to throw it away. He ended up finding uh, Jontae at the last second. Big game. Great throw on the goal line fade to Brian Edwards. Should have been caught. Edwards has not helped himself. No. So I think Hayner, this is what we've seen from Hayner. The Chiefs game was the outlier. This is more in line with what we've seen from Jake Hayner all camp. Deuce said last night he doesn't see the team shaking this room up, as in moving on from Jameis. I'm not ready to go there either because I wasn't ready. I'm not going to all of a sudden flip my stance because he did better from game one to game two. I still think right now, Jameis is the backup quarterback. But I think what Hayner did do was show you that he can respond from adversity. He can respond from negativity. And and I think you see what he does well. When you when you process fast like that, and you get that that half a count, that half a second, you know, beat on the defender. Yep. You don't necessarily have to have all the greatest physical tools in the world because you're just mentally you're a second fast. And I think that certainly helped his game and it will help his game going forward. All right. Last question we have for today. Uh, this is from Joshua and Gentilly. That was a nice challenge for Will Lutz and Blake Groupie. Should Blake Groupie be our kicker while we have a chance to get a good rookie kicker? So I think the way he what what he's asking here is: Should the Saints take the less expensive rookie route than bring back Will Lutz for another season? This has become a debate, hasn't it? A really big debate. And Deuce, when I spoke to him last night, he seems to believe there's some validity to this that. It was was a Peter King that had put that you know the Saints could be looking to trade whoever doesn't win this competition to Denver. You know the connection. <laughs> um, I think Lutz has the bigger leg. I think he's shown that. He he crushed a sixty-two yarder in a practice, and I thought he had won the competition at that point. But Groupie keeps showing up, keeps showing up, keeps showing up. He's been unbelievably consistent. If it were me. Now, if it were me, I don't know which way the coaches are leaning, but if it were me, I would still go with the experienced guy who's done it for you before. Lutz is not that old. Is he even 30? I don't even think so yet. I don't even think he's 30. Up. I know he had a rough year last year, and he had the injury the year before that. So it's been, it hasn't been an easy stretch for Lutz. 29. But he's proven he can do it. So it's not like we're talking about like a 38-year-old and a 22-year-old. We're talking about a 29-year-old. I would still go with that, but groupie has done enough to put himself in the conversation of possibly being this team's kicker. Sounds like he's going to kick somewhere in the NFL. Because whoever doesn't win this competition is going to get a job somewhere, likely in the mountains of, of Colorado. 
the specialist thing that was interesting because while I think that it's been a really good competition between Groupie and Lutz, the the competition no one's talking about and it's been a kind of a kind of a stinker has been the punter. Yeah. Gillikin has been wildly inconsistent. I don't know what happened to him. Hasn't had a good camp. Lou Headley was the guy they brought in. He had that nice Aussie style kick where they downed it like the four yard line. Um, but it, he had a, a bad bad punt before that. So that's something to really watch as well. So this specialist thing has kind of given us another layer of something to watch as we get into the final preseason week because um, there's some unanswered questions there. One, who wins a competition? The other one, is the other competition even worth it? Or should they look elsewhere outside of who they currently have? Because I, I'm here to tell you, man, that, that punter thing no one's talking about, but that that could be an issue. So I, I think specialist-wise, that's something to watch going forward. All right, so that's that's it for our questions. Thank you guys so much for... Final word uh, feature. Send yeah. them in. Uh, please, keep sending them in. We're going to keep doing these as many as we can crank out per podcast. Sean, do you have any final thoughts as we head into this now vacant last week of training camp before this last preseason game? I'm so ready. I'm so ready. I'm sure all of y'all are ready for August to be over. Um, Record-breaking heat here, <laughs> hurricanes and earthquakes over there. I think this team is ready. I think it was a fantastic week of actual work. Once they actually got on the field and did the work, all the things aside, the two joint practices and the game, I thought the Saints played very well and grew as a team. Now, they got to do better at penalties. We know that. Um, that's a discipline thing, and it was all practice as well. This is not just some fluky, bad ref thing. They need to concentrate on that. But I think you've now already gotten to the point of, okay, now we just got to be a little more disciplined because that can hurt you. If you want to win games... And go where you want to go, win the division, like Tyron Matthew told me after the game, uh, before the game. You got to focus on the, your vulnerabilities, and right now the biggest is the penalty situation because that can kill you, that can cost you, that can crush you in these games when they're so close. But I think this team's ready. I'm ready for the preseason to be over, mm -hmm. and I'm ready for the regular season, and I'm glad to be back with you. Let's get this regular season going. One more game, and then we are off to the regular season, so it should be fun. Good to have you back, brother. For everybody, thank you everybody for tuning in. Remember to like, subscribe, rate, and review. You can find us wherever you listen to and now watch your podcast. For Sean Fazan, I'm Vasilios. We'll catch you guys next time.